Hi guys, I'm Rival. Today we're going to be talking about CSS BEM. So what is BEM? BEM is a front-end methodology. It was created by a European country called Yandex. The goal of BEM is to create efficient and organized CSS. So what does BEM stand for? BEM stands for Block Element Modifier. You're looking at a screenshot from the getbem.com website. I suggest you check it out. I just thought that they described it the best, so uh, why not use that to describe it to you? So block. Block is a standalone entity that is meaningful on its own. Some examples are header, container, etc. An element are parts of a block and have no standalone meaning. They are semantically tied to its block examples, menu item, list item, and so on. A modifier. Modifiers are flags on blocks or elements. We use them to change appearance or behavior. Some examples are disabled, highlighted, checked, etc. So why should we use BEM? Well, BEM forces modularity. This means that there would be no problems with cascading, and you can transfer blocks between projects. Number two, reusability. This means that we get to reuse our CSS effectively, which means we reduce the amount of CSS. Of course, this means it reduces the amount of times we rewrite code and also reduces page load. Number three, structure. BEM introduces a structure and guidelines for developers to follow. So this means that teams and you know this can even mean two or more can uh, really benefit from having this structure it's really simple for teams to follow and it means that people or members of your dev team are all writing in the same way which means that picking up projects uh, picking up a new project all becomes very easy to do so here's another screenshot from getbem.com and in this screenshot it shows us um, a labeled screenshot of github and if you need to or if you want to practice bem you need to be able to break down a website into blocks elements and modifiers so this is just a great example of um, a lab of a website that has the labels on it so uh, all in green we have the logo the input the menu the button the another input and another button now those are all blocks in blue, we have menu elements. So we have explore, features, enterprise, and blog, and they are menu elements. So they are elements of the block menu. Then we have some modifiers. We just have a couple. In red on the right, you can see size big and theme green. So what's happening there is there's just an extra class that's applying theme green to button and um, increasing the size of the input. So again, another screenshot from GetBem. They just uh, use perfect examples. And here we go. This is an example of a button. So we have normal, we have a success state, and a danger state. So if you take a look at the HTML on the left, we have three buttons we, with a class of button, and then button, button, dash, dash, state, dash, success, and then button, button, dash, dash, state, dash, danger. So on the right-hand side, you can see BEM in action. We have one class for button, and that has all our sty usual styles you'd expect to see, like display inline block, border radius, padding, and so on. So that's reused for all states of the button. And then we just have a modifier so uh, for success and danger that just changes either the color or the background. So we are reusing CSS, making it effective, making it easy to read. Naming. So naming and programming and software dev development is always a difficult thing. Um, we always need to strive for a good naming structure, and in BEM it's all about naming. Blocks need to be unique. Block names should equal the CSS class. Element names must be unique to the block, and we do not use IDs. So here's an example of how you would go about creating a structure for your CSS for any block. So we can we start off by having a class for the block itself so we would start off with block name then we'll have for the elements within that block we would have block name and then underscore underscore element and then for a modifier for the element within a block 
we'll have block name underscore underscore element dash dash modifier. Now there's various ways to, you know, various syntax that people do employ for uh, BEM, but it's up to you and your team to decide what's best for you, what's easiest to read and easiest to maintain. But you, if you follow BEM, it'll make life a lot easier anyway. So thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe and feel free to ask any questions below. Thanks for watching.